Welcome back to this special edition of Newsmax Newsmakers, and thanks very much for spending the time with us today. We're joined by Brent Bozell, number one best-selling author and founder and president of the Media Research Center. Brent's latest book, co-authored with Tim Graham, is titled Unmasked, Big Media's War Against Trump. It exposes the media's vicious attempt to demolish the 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Brent, you really are one of the most respected and outspoken leaders in the conservative movement today. Right out of the gate, you received powerful praise from Rush Limbaugh for the book Unmasked. He said, objective journalism is dead. Today's leftist news media are activist hacks working relentlessly to destroy conservatism, to literally eliminate it and the people who live and believe in it. Now, you better read Unmasked. That's what Rush Limbaugh said. Now, Brent, you're armed with one of the most engaged social media armies, and it really is, in the conservative movement. Were you concerned about starting a media war when you released the book? I mean, you name quite a few specific names. Well, I think I think the uh, uh, the left in the media have have declared war on conservatives. Um, once upon a time, you could work with the liberal press. You could work with CNN and MSNBC. You can't do it anymore. Um, they are dead set on destroying our movement. And if you happen to be a conservative hired by them, it's only a matter of time before they fire you. So I don't much care. All right, now, late-night show hosts have been lashing out of President Trump since he was elected into office, essentially using their very large, very vocal platforms as an open battlefield to discredit his positions. People like Bill Maher, Jimmy Kimmel, Stephen Colbert, Conan O'Brien, Trevor Noah, Jimmy Fallon, the list goes on. Let's take a look. It's surprising Trump is orange because if you ask me, he is bananas. And done. It's so much fun. I love it. It's no secret that President Trump loves Twitter, right? <laughs> it's the only love affair he's had that didn't end in a hush money payment. In fact, Trump loves Twitter so much, he actually based his hairstyle on the Twitter bird. Yeah. All right, Brent. Brent, how has mainstream media's mockery of this president influenced the portrayal of Trump's administration? Well, I think that they have wanted to polarize America. And what they are doing is feeding the left with as much ammunition as they can to either anger them or to make them uh, consider this, this presidency to be a joke. They won't give it serious attention because they don't want America and the world to give Donald Trump serious attention. All right, Brent, let's move on to the Trump-Russia debacle in 2017. Now, back then, ABC News' chief investigative reporter, Brian Ross, made an outrageous claim. He said that General Michael Flynn would testify that during the 2016 campaign, then-candidate Donald Trump had ordered Flynn to make contact with the Russians, which contradicted all that Donald Trump had said to that point. We know how that story ended, though ultimately leading to Ross leaving the network in disgrace. So what gives the leftist media the right to report non-vetted, let's call it what it is, fake news that can and will endanger this nation? Very simple proposition, journalism 101, two sources. This is what we're all taught. You have two independent sources or you don't have a story. They will run with anything, including water cooler talk, if it hurts Donald Trump. He talks about fake news. I always had a problem with that until you realize there really is fake news. All right, Brent, what about the firing of former FBI Director James Comey? Now, in the book, you and Tim describe it as being, quote, widely hyped as the opening scene of a new Watergate or worse. What do you mean by that? Explain. Well, they want, they want to suggest that Donald Trump abused his power as president to, uh, to destroy anyone, any noble person who might get uh, down to get to the bottom of it. James Comey has had an agenda against the president from the very start. James Comey is a liar who's been caught lying numerous times, and yet the media treated him as a hero. He was their beginning salvo against Donald Trump. All right, in general, and I think it's fair to say, the media is using their power and influence to create an anti-Trump propaganda machine. So how can they be stopped? Well, I think the American people need to know as much as possible about the media, and I think you're starting to see it. Um, in fact, 
Donald Trump, his, his numbers have ticked up, even though he's getting 89, 92, 93, 94 percent negative coverage, unheard of in the annals of the coverage of any president in the history of the republic, and yet they can't destroy him. The American people are looking for other sources of information. They're coming to Newsmax as well, because they don't trust the national news media. They ought not to. Pew Research posted a study stating that Americans have taken matters into their own hands now to avoid being what they consider duped by fake news. So Americans' efforts include the following. 78% have conducted their own fact-checking of news stories. 63% have stopped getting news from a particular outlet. 52% have changed the way they use social media. 43% have lessened their overall news intake. Now, this isn't a fight, Brent, that gets stirred up overnight. So in the book, you and Tim outline how all this started with what you're calling the inevitable Trump loss that didn't happen. Explain that, please. Well, Donald Trump was a product of the media, uh, of Hollywood, because of Apprentice shows and, and the like. And they found him an attractive figure because he brought an audience. But then he did the unthinkable. He announced that he really was going to run for president. They thought it was the funniest thing in the world. Um, and they made a, a, a mockery of him on late night television, in the news programs and the like. But then he did the doubly unthinkable. He declared war on them. He said that they were fake media and he pointed at them and he told them to tell the truth. And this is where the media went ballistic. And it was at that moment that they set out to destroy him. And what ended up happening was they destroyed themselves instead. So the backbone of the book of Unmasked is how and why Trump has received the most negative and viciously personal. I mean, it really is just terrible coverage of any president in history. Brent, why do you think Trump became public enemy number one? Well, Trump did something that I thought was rather unique. He brought his rock star uh, persona to the stage, quite literally, to these rallies around the country, which grabbed the attention of the American people. And what happened was that, as with Ronald Reagan, he was, over, he was able to speak over the media and connect with the public going over the media. But as opposed to Ronald Reagan, he also did it by going right through the media, making an issue of them. No one's ever done it the way he did. He understood something. He understood that the enemy of my enemy, or the, the enemy of his, his fans, I'm sorry, believed the enemy of my friend is my enemy. And so what happened was the more the media attacked him, just as with Ronald Reagan, the more his base got emboldened and, and supportive of him. This was a fight that Donald Trump, I think, knew he could win from the start. Now, some media outlets, and I, and I really despise when they do this, have gone as far as to compare President Trump to Adolf Hitler. Somehow they stretched the idea that propaganda being Hitler's primary tool used in his movement is something similar to what Donald Trump is doing. They go as far as to call it a threat. What do you say to that, Brent? You remember, we're supposed to be the haters. The conservatives right. are supposed to be the name callers, the haters. We're the ones who are getting censored left and right in social media for our behavior and for our language. And yet, on a regular basis, top news people are accusing him of being a Nazi, of being a fascist, of being a communist. You've got Chris Matthews, who accused him of, he and his family, of being like Saddam Hussein and his family. I just think this one through. Uh, they, they, they seem like they just can't be vicious enough against him. They can't be more insulting uh, about his wife. All right. Now, by now, every American has heard plenty, more than plenty, about Russia collusion, the Mueller investigation, and everything related to it. You wrote, write about this extensively in the book. In your opinion, how have these investigations, Mueller, these ongoing congressional investigations, influenced the media's Trump coverage? Well, let's, let's look at it this way. Since the day, uh, since before the election ended, this accusation has been out there. No matter how much evidence has been growing about the collusion between the media and some pretty nefarious agents in the State Department, between uh, the FBI and the Clinton campaign, between 
Clinton supporters and Russia themselves, no matter how much evidence has arisen, the, the focus has been collusion, 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 nonstop, the accusations. Although, and as the conservatives have brought out all along, they said there wasn't one iota of evidence, not one iota of evidence, but the media kept pointing to the Mueller report. It's coming, it's coming. He's a paradigm, paradigm of objectivity. He's a statesman. This is a man whose opinion you can trust. He's getting to the bottom of this. The Mueller report came out. Donald Trump was vindicated. You just saw the wheels come off completely with the media at that point. They have doubled down on collusion. Now they attack Mueller as being some kind of agent of evil. <laughs> Along comes Bob Barr. Again, they point to Bob Barr as such an even-handed, great attorney general. Look at the job he did under Bush, under uh, George Bush. Bob Barr comes out and affirms the innocent, uh, innocence of this president. Now he's public enemy number one. The, 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 the Democrats in the House are going bananas on this, holding him in, con in contempt. The media are doing nothing but uh, throwing fuel on the flames. They do not want to leave this issue alone, and they will be focused on it from now until Election Day. So, Brent, what does all this mean for the American people, and what was the driving force behind you and Tim writing this book? I do believe that democracy itself is being threatened. How can the American people reach an honest and credible decision on their leaders when the news media are distorting things in an attempt to turn elections in their direction? Democracy itself is being threatened. I think conservatives need to be very concerned about this. Brent, do you feel that digital platforms like Google News, Yahoo, Facebook, and others are censoring political news through manipulation of their algorithms? We don't believe it. We know this is the fact. It's manipulation of algorithms, but it's also personal editorial decisions. Every day you learn of a new conservative organization, another conservative leader who's been banned or demonetized or in any way kept from talking to the American people through social media. That too is quite frightening because they are worldwide operations. All right, Brent, back in 2003, the late conservative columnist Charles Krauthammer coined a phrase. That phrase was Bush derangement syndrome. And it was defined as the acute onset of paranoia and otherwise normal people in reaction to the policies, the presidency, and even the very existence of George W. Bush. So fast forward several years now, and Trump has tweeted about Trump derangement syndrome, what people call TDS. He said, some people hate the fact that I got along well with President Putin of Russia. They would rather go to war than see this. It's called Trump derangement syndrome. Now, psychology, psychology excuse me, today in the Urban Dictionary both agree that TDS, Trump derangement syndrome, is a real condition in which a person has been driven effectively insane due to their dislike of Donald Trump to the point at which they'll abandon all reason and logic. So that being said, do you agree, do you feel that Trump derangement syndrome is real and is directly affecting today's liberal media? Oh, very much so. Try to talk to a liberal about Donald Trump. Good luck getting a point across. Try to talk to a liberal about the accomplishments of Donald Trump, whether it's economic, social policy, foreign policy, military policy. The list is rather endless of real accomplishments, not debatable ones. You can't get a sentence across with the liberals. They despise him, and I blame the media more than anyone, because it's the media that created this monster for liberals. So in the book, you and Tim name names. You outline the top 10 anti-Trump media offenders. Now, following President Trump's D-Day speech, Fox News reported, quote, hell freezes over, which refers to your number one Trump hater, Jim Acosta. What were the factors that went into building that list? Well, we looked at the whole picture. We looked at the history of, of these reporters um, and how individually they've taken on the mission of destroying Donald Trump. All of them are different. We categorize them. It was subjective on our part, but I think it's rather accurate. Do you think fake news has changed the future outlook of politics? 
I don't think that you're going to be able to look at the news media the same again. I do believe they destroyed themselves. I do believe that CNN will never regain its, its credibility. MSNBC will never regain its credibility. Therefore, their coverage of politics are going, is going to be seen in a very different light in the years to come. So, Brent, that crisis of confidence that Americans have in their media, what impact will that have on the 2020 presidential election? I think the media are going to play the decisive role, and that's important. They will either move the needle two, three points against Donald Trump, and that could cause him the election easily, or they are going to so embolden his base that the base will turn out in record numbers because of them and give Donald Trump the election. It's too soon to tell which way it's going to go. All right, Brent, are there any last thoughts that you would like to leave the viewers with today about the 2020 election and maybe why your book is critically important in relation to that? Conservatives must understand that the real enemy is not Nancy Pelosi. It is not any one of the 45 candidates running against Donald Trump. The real enemy of the conservative movement are the national news media. Conservatives need to focus on that and turn their attention to that and turn their attention to alternative forms of information. The book will outline exactly what conservatives should do. Brent Bozell, thanks very much for joining today. Thank you for having me. All right, then. The name of this critically important book is Unmasked. Big media's war against Trump. It's topping the bestseller list. It's already number one on Amazon. According to Rush Limbaugh, Rush says, quote, you better read Unmasked. Mark Levin calls Brent Bozell an indispensable warrior in the cause of liberty and against the arrogant elites in the press. This book fully examines the media's war on Donald Trump and exposes the weaponized and radicalized news media as a direct threat to democracy with unethical attempts to manipulate public opinion. I highly Recommend getting a copy of Brent Bozell and Tim Graham's latest book, Unmasked, Big Media's War Against Trump, available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and wherever books are sold. But just for watching today, you can get this book free with our special offer and save that $25. Plus, you'll get some additional special gifts. So go online or call the toll-free number on your screen now and claim your copy of Unmasked, Big Media's War Against Trump by Brent Bozell. Thank you very much for being with us for this important special edition of Newsmax Newsmax. The big media want to stop President Trump, but who's really behind this fake news? Brent Bozell names their names in his new bestseller, Unmasked. For the first time, Unmasked reveals the 10 media people who hate Trump the most. Bozell outs their secret agendas, their phony claims. Newsmax calls this expose just shocking. Rush Limbaugh says you better read Unmasked. Text us now, get your excerpt of Unmasked, and find out how to get a free copy of Unmasked. Just text now for your free book.